failed in New Jersey? Try Basel. Investors in Johnson & Johnson have tried to gin up activist interest in breaking up the U.S. healthcare conglomerate. J&J &J could indeed use a shake, but for now, alas, it is unshakable. Over a decade, total returns at Johnson & Johnson have tracked healthcare stocks and lagged consumer stocks, despite having the best brand in the business. Its diversified model of drugs and devices and consumer products is something of a dud. Its $18 billion in net cash is a bad acquisition just waiting to happen. Alas, Johnson & Johnson's $290 billion market cap make it too big for most activists. The J&J culture is a barrier too. The company's admirable credo puts customers first, employees second, and community third. Fair, note, not maximal shareholder returns come forth. The CEO talks about how the model allows a holistic approach and makes J&J a partner of choice. Maybe this will bear fruit someday. But why should the boss care? The last CEO oversaw a long period of underperformance, which ended in 2012. He left the company with a $140 million payout. J&J &J just isn't going to worry about activists, and the shares have not done badly enough for that to change now. Healthcare activists could, however, turn their guns on Switzerland. Novartis's shares have lost a quarter of their value in six months. Its valuation is middling, despite a very strong core drug business. It does not have the dual-class share structure that insulates many other Swiss companies. Its sluggish eye care business accounts for a full fifth of profits. Why not spin it off or sell it? The generics unit could go too, and Novartis, unlike Johnson & Johnson, has a history of getting rid of non-core units. Peaceful Switzerland is admittedly an odd place to go and pick a fight. But maybe that is why opportunities remain there. Rob Armstrong, head of Lex.